Now this is the crankshaft for our SMX. Sunny Bryant billet crank, Hemi journal. So this is a bigger journal. Still has a big block Chevrolet main. Those are just some lines from Balancer. That's just a uh, discoloration, it's nothing. Um, Bob weight, 2608 on, on this uh, particular combination. Now, to show you some things about this, fully counterweighted, which means it has a counterweight on each rod throw, on each half of the rod throw, okay? And these are also lightened and gun drilled. So this is lightning. So if you can see here, beep, 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 all the way through, through there on all four. And then the mains, this thing, is called gun drill and what gun drilling means is that they actually drill a hole all the way through the center of the crankshaft right there as a matter of fact as i lay this crankshaft down you'll see it goes all the way through you don't put the soft plug and snap ring in here uh, there's a heck of an oil leak i can tell you that right now <laughs> but anyways um super good uh i mean i think within one of the highest quality cranks if not the highest quality crank shafts that you can get uh you pay for them that's for sure um and you have little things like uh um you'll added material through here uh which is increasing our overlap if you want to know what overlap is this particular stroke crank, because this is a four or 500 in my personal motor, I'll probably do some explaining on that later, but this overlap right here where the rod journal actually is overlapping with the main journal. Instead of with the great big stroke crankshaft where this rod pin is way up here, and if you ran it right straight across, would actually have an air gap right there. That is a much weaker crankshaft. So we have to add material through here and this overlap is really important for a super strong crankshaft and you know 4500 5000 horsepower stuff so that's what you'll be looking at overlap that's one of the things of uh, uh just a little bit of crankshaft tech uh of how you know great big thousand cubic inch or 959 cubic inch uh they will they're crankshaft breakers and uh it's just the nature of them i mean you move this rod pin way up here and there's just not much material. There's no overlap in this area. So my uh, four one twenty five stroke crankshafts, you know this this line or this uh, overlap goes like down here. So it keeps on getting stronger and stronger the less stroke you have. But we need some cubic inch. So anyways, I'll uh, put this down and we'll start putting the crankshaft in. Um, we'll go over here to uh, before we do that. So we talked about the main caps, main bearings. I'm not going to go over clearances and stuff because I go over that in one of my other videos. Um, this thing does have these really cool. These are the main studs for it. This is main stud. Um, super good piece. And if you see here, shouldered. So this is a 5 8 diameter thread here and half inch up on top. And the shoulder allows us to locate and center up the cap more accurately. So that is why I like to have these studs go in, struggling to get it to go back in the hole. Sorry, here we'll just start it out over here. Or maybe I'll grab another stud. Anyways, that'll just go down and that'll sit up flush. I'll show you that later.
I just saw me put the crankshaft in. We talked about the crankshaft, talked about the block. Uh, now I'm going to start showing the other stuff. I had to change the venue here. I had to move over into my normal assembly area out of the one over there. So that's why the scenery is all changed here. So anyways, I'll grab the camera and I'll start showing you uh, everything that's going on with the next process of pistons, rods, uh, that rings, and that assembly. Now, I was going to stop here real quick because you may see me um, indexing the rings, okay? So, it, here's the deal. Um, I, I index them offset, so I put the second ring underneath the intake pocket and the top ring over at like 11 o'clock position. So, uh, top ring is, I'm sorry, top ring is lined up over here, second ring is lined up over here. I just put gaps on the expander rails at opposite sides but a, a interesting note is that um, rings rotate on the piston and regardless of what you think at some point in time they can't rotate at exactly the same R rpm so at some point in their lives you know i mean within i, I don't know I, th I think if i recall right the number is somewhere around like three RPM is what they rotate at, Some something similar to that. But they do rotate, and at some point in time, they're always gonna line up. So people put a lot of emphasis on that, and there really is no emphasis to do it. I just do it because that's just the way I do it. Um, but rings do rotate, and uh, I don't remember the exact number. Three, three per minute might be a little bit high, might be a little bit lower than that, but uh, very interesting that they do rotate. Um, just thought you'd like to know that. interesting little thing so this is a dowel pin bearing same dowel same bearings i've been using for forever and uh all of a sudden the dowel pin hole is either got a burr a good burr on it or uh just slightly undersized and uh is not going on to the dowel pin in the rod now in a aluminum rod you have a dowel pin in there because it it's probably overthought but um it just helps to locate you know bearing tangs help uh are not there to keep your bearing from spinning that's stupid it's there to keep your bearing located and not moving side to side well the dowel pin is kind of a probably over redundant um the thought is that the the housing grows so much that the bearing does loses its crush and then would try to spin mm, probably not but anyways that's just the way it's always been done and uh, i'm pretty sure that our my uh, dowel pin is correct but i'm gonna measure this stuff up and see what's going on and uh take care of that
right now you can see we're done with the uh <clears throat> with uh, putting the piston rods in showed you all that uh now to torque these at 105 pounds one single motion if possible usually I'll, I'll give it a little bit and then one one motion to it um old style uh, aluminum rods you would end up having to put feeler gauges in between in order to keep the the caps lined up because they would have a straight serration on it these uh, mgps have a circular serration so they always line up properly so you don't have to use any um feeler gauges on both sides of the rod to keep things lined up and and uh, correct so that makes it nice a little bit quicker easier so we're all torqued up i've already done all the clearances i didn't bother showing you all that crap and uh now we're going to be moving on to um short blockers together i already got all the plugs in cam brains are in uh, i didn't bother showing you plugs i mean anybody can pull a plug in and uh, now we will go over to uh we'll start working on the front of the motor with the camshaft and the gear drive.